Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a WireGuard site-to-site -site VPN tunnel between two OPN Sense firewalls. Sit down, relax, grab a tea or coffee, and let's begin. Before I walk you through the setup, I wanted to address one small thing. I see a lot of interest in paid OPN Sense support, especially after my last few videos. So I just wanted to remind you we are doing consulting work for the open source products like TrueNAS, Proxmox, XCPNG, OPN Sense, Nextcloud, MailCow, Fusion PBX, and many others. If you need some help with any of these, send us a message to help at gateway-it.com and I will personally respond to it. Now, as usual, I would like to start this video with a diagram. Imagine we've got two sites, both connected to the internet and both have OPN Sans firewall in front of all of the other devices. And we have a need for our VM A at site A to be able to talk to our VM B at site B. For this purpose, we are going to configure WireGuard VPN site to site tunnel from site A to site B. All of the IP addresses you see on the screen will be used in the video, so you can pause here to memorize them if you'd like to. Now with this covered, let's move on to the firewall web interface. And here we have two firewalls, WireGuard Peer 1 and WireGuard Peer 2. They have slightly different interface colors, so it's easier for you to recognize them. And first thing we need to do is to go to System, Firmware, Plugins, and install WireGuard on both of our firewalls. In my case, it's already installed, but you can hit Control F on your keyboard and search for WireGuard. It will be somewhere at the bottom of the list. Then after it's installed, go to VPN, WireGuard, and open the local tab. Create a new config, give it a name. I'll say site A. Public key and private key, leave these empty. They will be generated automatically. We don't need to specify any DNS servers because this is a site-to-site -site VPN. For the tunnel address, I chose 10.0.01 slash 24. We don't have any peers configured yet. So that's pretty much it for now. Just hit save and move on to the other firewall. Install the WireGuard here first then go to VPN, WireGuard, and repeat the same procedure here. Open a local tab, add a new configuration. I'll say side B. You cannot have any spaces or special symbols here. That's why I'm not using them. And the tunnel address would be 10.0.02 slash 24. Hit save. Now go ahead and copy the port number you used in your configuration and let's add a new firewall rule for it. So go to firewall, rules, floating, add new rule, action pass, quick enabled. For the interface, I'll choose van, but you can choose multiple interfaces if you have a need. Direction any, TCP IP version four, because I don't use IPv6, protocol UDP, Source any, destination this firewall, destination port range, other, and paste in your port number twice. Now, I don't want to log the packets and for category, I'll specify WireGuard. You may not have it in your list, so just type it in manually. For the description, I'll use WireGuard from site A. Hit save, apply changes, and repeat the same manipulation on the firewall A. Now, when this is done, go to VPN, WireGuard, and open the endpoints tab. Add new configuration, name, site B, 
public key, open up the VPN WireGuard on side B, go to local, hit edit, and copy its public key. Now insert it here. For the allowed IPs, we're going to use all the private networks available at side B. Let me just go to interfaces, overview, and let's expand the interfaces we are interested in, which is this one here. Then LAN2. And don't forget to specify the tunnel address as well. Endpoint address is the address of our firewall. In my case, it's 164.02. And the port number is, is the default wire guard port, but I didn't bother to memorize it, sorry. So the endpoint port in my case would be 51,820. And I want to send keep alives every 60 seconds. That's pretty much it. I can just hit save at this point, but I've got one small note for you. If one of your firewalls has a dynamic IP address, you don't have to specify it over here. What you can do, you can use a 10.0.0.2 which would be the address of the tunnel interface on this firewall. And WireGuard will figure out what to do with the rest on its own. But because I do have my firewalls on static IPs, I'll just use it in here. All right, let's save. Go back to local tab, edit the interface and activate side B as a peer. Hit save and move on to the firewall B. Go to endpoints, add new endpoint and repeat the same operation here. So for this configuration, I want to specify site A. Public key, go back, click local, edit, copy the public key, paste it in, for the allowed IPs, go to Interfaces, Overview, expand the interfaces you want to access over the tunnel, and our tunnel address itself. Now the endpoint address is this. And the port address is this. Keep alive 60, hit save. Go back to local, edit add our peer at site A, save. Now go to general and activate the VPN connection on both firewalls. Now go to dashboard and check if WireGuard is running. Sorry, I didn't realize that the service was hidden behind my face. And uh, as you can see here, WireGuard service is running on both firewalls. Now let's go back to VPN and let's actually make sure that our tunnel is up. Click on list configuration. Give it a second, it will generate the configuration and we can see that latest handshake was one minute ago and there was a transfer. And we need to see the same thing on our firewall B. So the tunnel is up. Now let's go ahead and add our WireGuard interfaces. Click on interfaces, assignments, 
and you're going to see a WireGuard 0 interface if you did not configure any WireGuard interfaces in the past. If you did, you're going to have WireGuard and then number of the interface. Okay, so we just need to give it a description, WireGuard, site to site, site B, add. And let's do the same thing on the other firewall. Interfaces, assignments. Wire guard, site to site, site A. Now when our interfaces are added, let's go ahead and enable them. So enable, prevent interface from removal. Let's save, apply changes, and let's do the same on firewall A. Enable, prevent interface from removal. Save, and apply changes. Now when our interfaces are up, let's add firewall rules for the traffic to pass through. Go to firewall, rules, and then choose your newly created interface. Hit add. And for this demo, I'll add a wide open rule because I don't want to block anything. But in production, you would want some more specific rules in here. I wanna apply changes and let's move on to the other firewall. Firewall rules, add, and I'll just add it right here. Apply changes. That's it for the firewall rules for now. And after this, we need to go to gateways and configure gateway for each interface we created. Hit add. Interface would be WireGuard site to site site A, and I'll give it the same name. You want to choose FAR Gateway and disable gateway monitoring. Hit save and apply changes. Move on to the firewall A and do the same thing there. Some people will say, it will work without adding the gateways. To which I respond, yes, it will. But once you face a use case that requires a functional gateway, for example, full LAN network VPN routing or dynamic routing with FRR, it will be a headache to configure the gateway after the site-to-site -site VPN is up and running. Now let's start the WireGuard service just in case on both of our firewalls. And let's check with our Linux VMs if they can ping each other. So I have two VNC sessions open and let me ping 192.168.21.1, which is the VM over here behind the other firewall and this one's pinging. Let's do the other one. This one is pinging too. Let's do the trace route. And as you can see, we have three hops here. The first one goes to our local firewall. Second one is the tunnel IP of our firewall. And the third one is the actual destination. Another small note, you can probably recognize this firewall from my previous video on firewall rules. I had to disable reject private ranges rule for one VM to reach another one. And you're gonna have to add an exception somewhere here if you followed my guide on the firewall rules and you want your networks to talk to each other over the VPN tunnel. So not only you have to manage your rules in WireGuard site-to-site -site interface, you also have to manage your rules on the 
LAN interface level as well. As cool as WireGuard is, it has its own downsides. It's hard to troubleshoot due to a lack of proper logs, but unfortunately that's by design. OpenSense can't do anything about it. And WireGuard gateway monitoring is not functional at the moment, just to name the two. But overall, it was working great. We used it with VoIP traffic, with SSH traffic, and anything you can probably think of as a general use case. And it was rock solid. That's it for this video. Please like, sub and share. If you're interested in helping out our channel directly, there is a PayPal donation link down below. Special thank you to all the people listed on my left. They are active supporters of our channel and they help to deliver this content to all of you guys. And just one more announcement before I go. We started our own subreddit dedicated to this YouTube channel and all the topics it covers. Also, if you'd like to message me directly about consulting, cooperation, or any other topic, use my Reddit user link just below the community link over here. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.